So welcome to the uh, BroadArt Tell Me More Youth Services Collection Connection. This is the first time we're doing this really exciting uh, youth collection uh, for, for you, <laughs> basically. And we're going to be, uh, our, our team, our collection development team is going to be presenting the titles. Uh, we're very excited to have them. Uh, first, Erica, she's new to BroadArt and she's uh, our children and youth young adult programs manager and she's creating some amazing programs to keep your eyes open for all that we're doing. We also have three amazing collection development librarians that will be speaking today. Um, Jack is graphic novels. Susie is uh, an expert at, um, she, or actually she's a professor of children's literature. She's also, she was also a Newberry Committee a member and she co-authored a children's literature textbook. And Gwen comes to us from the Denver Public Library, which she worked there for many, many years. She does her special. She specializes in the zero to eighteen year old um, books, and she's also been on the Caldecott Committee and chairing the Theodore Seuss Grizel Award Committee. So she's we're really excited to have all three of them talking about books as well as Erica. I'm going to hand it over to Erica now and welcome everybody. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're so excited to be with you today to present some fantastic recent and forthcoming titles for winter and spring 2023. Last year, I joined Broad Arts' fantastic team of hardworking, knowledgeable librarians and support staff to launch Broad Art Youth Services with a mission to build upon our existing children's and teen programs and bring you useful updates, new series offerings, fun and inspirational programming resources, and more. I'll be back later to share some highlights of what we've been up to. But first, let me introduce Jack Phoenix, our graphic novel selector, who will present graphic novels and introduce a wonderful new lease program we have. Jack is also the manager of collection development and technical services at Cuyahoga Falls Library in Northeast Ohio, authored the SLJ starred reviewed book, Maximizing the Impact of Comics in Your Library, Graphic Novels, Manga, and More, and has a burning love for pop culture and balloon twisting. Over to you, Jack. Hi, thanks, Erica. All right, before I jump into the titles, I wanted to mention the hardcover graphic novel subscription plan we've just launched. It features titles for all ages, as well as titles from popular series, brands, and themes. Given the expense of full-color graphic novels, this allows you to try something new with less risk. Add them to your collection while they are burning bright, and return them when they are dying off in popularity. Contact support at broadart.com to learn more about that. Next. And now, on to graphic novels, starting with a handful of young adult titles. First up is David Levithan's Every Day, translated into graphic novel format by Dion NBD, giving us the visual tale of A, the teen who wakes up in a different body every day. I'm very excited about this one. This is just in time for the 20th anniversary of Levithan's Boy Meets Boy and Pride Month celebrations, and I was a big fan of the original Every Day novel. Then, From Twisted Life to Twisted Tale is part of your world, an adaptation of one of the most popular titles in the series, where you'll discover a new side of The Little Mermaid in this darkly romantic reimagining of the classic Disney film, now available as a graphic novel. And this is very timely because the live-action Little Mermaid is getting ready to come out. Next slide. We also wanted to call out book two in the Witch's Throne series, which continues the action-packed graphic novel epic that blends fantasy adventure, shonen manga, and the grand imagination of Dungeons and Dragons, based on the hit Tapas webcomic. Then, in Static, Up All Night, we'll meet Virgil, aka Static, who has amazing electrical abilities but is currently suffering from a broken heart. In DC's first graphic novel utilizing characters from Milestone, the Black-owned imprint launched back in the 1990s, Lamar Giles takes us on a fun excursion portraying a predominantly Black cast of characters as a positive representation of young people on a series of sometimes serious, sometimes humorous misadventures. Next slide. Now, the second in the Spirit of Denede series opens with a young 
Talicho Dene man's return home after becoming sober and his struggle to reconnect with his culture so he can heal himself and his community. Author Richard Van Camp is a prominent writer from the Dene Nation in Canada. Then Deb J.J. Lee's debut graphic memoir, In Limbo, is a coming-of-age story set in New Jersey and Seoul, delving into mental health, attempted suicide, and ultimately Deb's resilience and healing with the help of art and self-care, guiding her to a deeper understanding of her Korean-American heritage and herself. Um, I'm adding this one to the graphic medicine collection that we've been doing monthly at Brodart. And finally, I, Mia, my bilingual summer is Mexico in another, oh, sorry, my bilingual summer in Mexico is another coming of age story that explores bilingualism and immerses the reader in the same way that the lead character experiences the language and culture. Next slide. Moving into older middle grade, I'm super excited to announce Global, a new title coming from the team who brought us 2019's Excellence in Graphic Literature winner for young adult graphic fiction, Illegal. This timely story follows two courageous children, Sammy and Suki, as they face the effects of climate change. Sammy lives in a fishing village along the Indian Ocean, but the ocean is rising and each day they bring back fewer and fewer fish. Suki lives in the far north of Canada where warming temperature are melting the ice and polar bears are wandering into town looking for something to eat. Both are determined to do something to help their situations. Back matter includes interviews with those on the front line of climate struggle and details on how readers can help prevent climate change. Next slide. Next up, the Ajawaja is from the acclaimed author of the cult favorite comic series, Kim and Kim a humorous and horrific story of two misfit tweens who set out to research the legend behind a local ghost story and end up unleashing a demon on their hometown. And in Hoops, Matt Tavaros bases his latest graphic novel on the true story of Judy Warren and her 1976 state champion winning uh, teammates from Warsaw, Indiana. Je set, sorry, I screwed up. Set just a few years after title nine became law and their struggle for gender equality in high school sports. And then, and when everything went wrong, kids will meet 10 inventors who persevered despite their mistakes. As Thomas Edison famously said, I have not failed. I have just found 9,999 ways that do not work. Some titles on navigating the world up next. Sorry, I should have said next. Some titles on navigating the world up next. In Parachute Kids, a debut graphic novel for comic artist Betty C. Tang brings us an extraordinary story filled with humor and heart about three kids living on their own as undocumented new immigrants inspired by her own experiences as a parachute kid. Then in Song of the Sea, a young Irish boy and his little sister who can turn into a seal go on an adventure to free the fairies and save the spirit world. It's based on the animated movie and on Celtic mythology. And then we have a new Jerry Craft, where we find Jordan, Drew, and a small group of students from Riverdale Academy on a new school trip to Paris and a funny companion to New Kid and Class Act. Next, speaking of funny, here are a couple of laugh out loud new titles. Like in New Kid, nine-year-old Iggy is the kid, new kid in, pop, in Peculiar Woods, the ancient underwater city. Shortly after arriving in this strange place, Iggy gets lost in the woods where he discovers he can speak to inanimate objects. He sets off on an epic quest to help his inanimate new friends solve their problems, along with a mystery or two. Then in Grimwood, the first in a three-book series, Ted and Nancy arrive in this new place where they're met with thieving eagles, dramatic ducks, riotous rabbits, and a whole host of unusual characters. Narrated by a hilarious cockroach and bus driver, named Eric Dynamite, this series is perfect for young readers who are looking for big laughs. Next. Now for two titles that are ready for takeoff. First, we have The Boys with Wings from best-selling UK author Sir Lenny Henry. The book features characters of different ethnic and racial backgrounds and different abilities in this modern day superhero story that focuses on an ordinary kid who was about to become an extraordinary hero. 
The U.S. cover is expected soon. And in The Moth Keeper, Kay O'Neill brings to life a beautifully illustrated fantasy about passion, duty, and found family. With manga-like art, Anya, a new moth keeper, finds her job isolating and lonely. When she decides to take a break from the moon and see the sun for the first time, her village of lunar moths are left to deal with the consequences. Truly, this is a beautiful story you'll want to read. Next. I'm excited about this next pair as well. Though I have to say, I recently ran into a young woman who had never heard of the first one, and it made me feel very old. In the first collection of the Nancy comics from the new creator, Olivia James, readers will come along with eight-year-old Nancy and her pals as they navigate Robotics Club. Friendships at Central Elementary, remote schooling, and life with Aunt Fritzy and extended house guest Sluggo. It's perfect for reluctant readers with an appetite for humor and accurately depicts school and social life in the 21st century. Then we have a new spinoff to Max Brailler's hit series with The Last Comics on Earth. It features all four of our heroes and familiar monsters from the original series on new outrageous adventures. With the Netflix TV show bringing the series into a whole new level of popularity, this will surely be a hit. Next. Speaking of hits, there's a new series in the popular 8-bit warrior saga from Minecraft, targeting a slightly younger reader. A noob's diary of an 8-bit warrior combines the familiar narrative and characters of the illustrated novel series with the artwork style from the graphic novel series into this brand new format. Then we have a new series for gamer girls by the same name in which we meet 13-year-old Natalie, who, once revealed as a gamer, navigates the gaming world with her three BFFs. There's also some middle school drama woven into the plotline. Book one and two release simultaneously. And this is the... I hit my keyboard accidentally. And this is the only MG series focused on girls esports we've seen. Now, uh, next. Now for two robot-based series. The first is Travis Daventhorpe for The Win from debut graphic novelist Wes Mulbash. It's a fun, it's a pun-filled geeky sci-fi fantasy adventure where you'll join Travis as he dodges bullies, forges friendships, and perfects his science fair project, all while trying to fulfill his magical destiny with his trusty robot Travbot at his side. Then, in the new Bit by Bot series, a boy bitten by a robot suddenly has nanotechnology coursing through his veins, and he becomes Robot Boy, fighting crimes of a scientifically solvable nature. Back matter includes STEM-focused sidebars, fun facts, table of contents, and index. Six books released simultaneously as the start to this series. Next. Now to quickly mention some continuing series, all of which existed as print series prior to their graphic novel iterations. There's a new Big Nate, a new Cupcake Diaries, a new Heroes in Training from Joan Halub, a new Spy School title, and finally, a new Who Is title featuring the Dalai Lama. Next. Well, would you look at what we've got next? Cat series! I am thrilled about them all, but I'll call this first one perhaps my favorite for the day. This new addition to the mix is WizKit, which the publisher calls Hilda and the Troll meets the OK Witch. WizKit is Magical Cyclops Cat on her first trip away from her found home. Fort home? Oh, I should. As a wizard's apprentice, all of her lessons have been indoors, and she's far too lazy to go out exploring when she's hungry. And, and when she's hungry, she knows enough spells to conjure up delicious snacks. When an overdue library book literally cries out to be returned, however, Wizkit is sent to the library, and with the annoyingly optimistic book in tow, she meets strange characters with even stranger problems. Wizkit learns that with a little support and a new friendship, her own magical talents can be part of the solution. Yay! 
And not to be missed are new titles from Drew Brockington, Waffles and Pancake, Failure to Launch, Failure to Lunch, and from my favorite cat superhero, Cat Ninja, coming next month in Welcome to the Burbs. And that's a wrap. Now I'm going to turn it over to Susie Holly, who will be covering picture books and easy readers. And more. Um, and I'll be talking later and presenting some titles, but for now, I'm going to turn it over to Susie to get us going. Hi, everyone. Let's get started with picture books. You'll hear about plenty of titles to fit the 2023 Collaborative Summer Library Program, which is called its theme is All Together Now, and it features kindness, friendship, and unity, and a little of everything in between. Starting us off are some soon-to-be hits from authors you know well. First up is Once Upon a Book by Grace Lynn, illustrated by Kate Mester. It's a modern and magical folktale about the joy of reading. Then from Matt Barnett, with illustrations by Christian Robinson is 20 Questions, which is just that, an interactive series of captivating questions prompting readers to choose their own stories to fit the illustrations. And from acclaimed novelist Emma Straub, we have her first picture book, a humorous read aloud that will inspire kids to find their own hats from around the house or the library, and then to continue the silliness in other creative ways. Some other heavy hitters coming early this year include a biography of Motown in Sugar Pie Lullaby from Carol Boston Weatherford. It celebrates Motown singers and songwriters and can simply be read as a bedtime story or perused for more information and history. Then in every life, you'll see Marla Frazee's simple and profound meditation on the many wonders of life, recognizing and celebrating the experiences of living and calling attention to the small, simple moments in our day-to-day -day lives that describe, that deserve recognition and appreciation, including the most joyful and the sorrowful. Another noteworthy title here is from singer-songwriter Anna DeFranco in The Knowing. Young readers are invited to ponder the distinction between outer forms of identity and the inner light of consciousness. Though it sounds quite deep, we see universal scenes of childhood in India from first time illustrator, Julia Matthew, that pull it all together. Now for a few imaginative artsy titles, All About Nothing is the first in the All About Noticing series that encourages new perspectives. Each book will explore how art elements play unexpected roles in our everyday lives. This volume delves into negative space and the beauty of nothingness and aims to have parents thinking more about disconnecting and seeing the world as well. Then, in Eric Loves Animals, you'll find a 176-page treasury of sketches, drawings, paintings, sculptures, and collages to pour over with Eric's own words about animals, nature, art, children, and children at heart. And in In Between, April Pulley Sayers' photos show animals in some of their awkward in-between moments that we can all relate to, showing kids that sometimes life does get awkward, but hey, that's okay. Okay, now to get to the squirrely story. The leaf thief is back and don't touch that flower. This next entry in the best-selling Squirrel and Bird book series finds Squirrel confused about how spring works, but Bird explains how seasons change and that nature is to be shared, and there is back matter for further learning. Then the third volume in the Baby Animal series featured an enthusiastic baby squirrel and some grumpy forest friends who collide in the sweet and funny picture book. No, no, baby, and super moms will certainly relate to this title. Celebrating animal mothers and the many unique things animal mothers do to feed, protect, teach, and transport their young. A few community center titles are up next. Ancest Story and Hannah Salyer's striking nonfiction picture book invest investigating who created the ancient wall art that's been discovered around the world and why. The exact answers may be out of reach, but the investigation is half the fun. It includes extensive back matter. 
Then we have two in the neighborhood titles. City Beat finds Victoria and her neighbor preparing from seed to finish dish a beet salad for their community potluck. And in Sari Sari Summers, a young Filipino girl comes up with a brilliantly delicious way to attract customers after a heat wave leaves her Lola's store empty. The two indigenous tales are next. The first, We Belong to the Drum, addresses the universal challenge of the separation anxiety that comes with starting daycare or school. In Nikososis' story, his family uses drums to help him find connection and comfort. The author is from the Big Stone Cree Nation and illustrator is Plains Cree. And then the first picture book in Harper's Heart Drum imprint, Just Like Grandma, is written by Kim Rogers with Wichita Roots and illustrated by Hornbook honoree Julie Flett with Cree Met Roots. This lyrical story has little Becca watching her grandma create, play, and dance. And soon she knows that she wants to be just like grandma. Next up, in I Love You More Than You'll Ever Know, illustrations from Joy Wang Ruiz beautifully portray the love that parents and guardians feel for their children, showcasing small milestones and what they mean and how they are filled with love. This is written by two award-winning and married actors, Leslie Odom Jr. and Nicolette Robinson. A few more own voices titles are up next. V in Between is a beautiful story of self-knowledge and acceptance written by and about a transracial adoptee born in China and adopted by white parents. V struggles to find her place, but with encouragement from her parents and her Chinese dance teacher, she realizes there is strength in being in between. And in You Need to Chill, Juno Dawson, best-selling author of The Book is Gay and What's the T... T debuts a delightful, endearing debut picture book in which a sister answers everyone's question about where her brother Bill has gone in a bold, joyful, and warm-hearted way. Laura Hughes' illustrations make the message of love and inclusivity shine through on every page. Entrepreneur, FUBU founder, and Shark Tank fave Dave, I mean Damon, John introduces kids to basic ideas about money and starting their own businesses in Little Damon Learns to Earn, promising to ignite an early interest in how money works to develop the financial literacy that will set children up for future success. These next two are the runner-up and winner of Sleeping Bear Press's inaugural Own Voices, Own Stories Award, highlighting manuscripts written by BIPOC, and or LGBTQ plus authors with the intention of recognizing and amplifying new and diverse voices with underrepresented perspectives. Happy with my nappy reminds readers that everyone's hair is different and good and that you can use your hair to express your every mood and style. A Train Allen introduces the fastest kid around who zooms around after school each day, through the park, past the library, down the sidewalks, to where? Hmm, you'll have to read and find out. The Night Before Freedom invites readers to Grandma's annual retelling of the story of Juneteenth, with all the care and reverence such a holiday deserves. The story is written in the same meter as Clement C. Moore's The Night Before Christmas, making it a perfect read aloud. And in We Are Here, Tammy Charles' follow-up, to all because you matter. Harold's the greatest in all of us with Brian Collier's illustrations, bringing in her lyrical, affirmational, loving language to life. A, ter a third title is scheduled for later this year. Stronger Together is its title. By the way, both Brian Collier and Tammy Charles were interviewed on the CBS Morning Show a couple of days ago. You can Google it and see the video yourselves. It's really excellent. Then, in You So Black, 
London Lad illustrates the beautiful viral spoken word poem of the same name by Teresa Wilson, aka Teresa the Songbird. It takes the sting out of the insult, you so black, and refrains the phrase to celebrate the beauty of blackness. In more poetry, Remember takes Joy Harjo's iconic poem and pairs it with illustrations from Caldecott medalist Michaela Goad, encouraging young readers to reflect on family, nature, and their heritage. And in Come Back to Me, celebrated poet R.H. Sin's second lullaby offers a warm and comforting vibe for getting little ones to sleep. Janie Secker's illustrations really are something to behold. And if you haven't checked it out yet, Sin and Decker's first picture book, Dream My Child, was released last fall. Now, for some important friendship stories, we have When a Friend Needs a Friend, a wonderful picture book that teaches an important lesson about dealing with a friend's depression, honing in on how big feelings are a normal part of life, something to be felt rather than fixed, and how you can be an ally when someone you love is hurting. And in the sequel to The Proudest Blue, The Kindest Red, shows the power of friendship and kindness from Olympic medalist Ibtihaj Muhammad. It's picture day and Faiza can't wait to wear her special red dress. But when it's time for sibling pictures, she realizes that she and her sister, Asaya, don't match like her classmates do with their siblings. With help, Faiza finds the acts of kindness come back to you in unexpected ways. This wouldn't be a children's title presentation without a fart book. So here it is. Toby Tootles follows the story of an embarrassed little boy named Toby as his grandma teaches him not to let the little things get in the way of enjoying life. It's a sweet and funny lesson on how to handle life's hiccups and other unexpected eruptions. And in Tell Me Your Dreams, Amanda Coots, the best-selling author, I'm sorry, Amanda Clutes, the best-selling author of Live Your Life, offers a heartwarming picture book inspired by her own bedtime rituals with her son in which the boy shares all of the things he wants to dream about, including seeing his beloved data again. It's a very positive story meant to prepare youngsters for a peaceful night's sleep. Now here's something many of you would rather be thinking of than cold weather. In Billy and Bean at the Beach, readers will be enchanted by the magic the resilient Billy discovers in the ocean with the help of her dog, Bean, after a not-so-nice surprise finds her the first time she goes into the water. Similarly, When You Can Swim is Jack Wong's celebration of learning to swim with a, di with a diverse cast of children and families who each experience the mysterious joys of water in nature. Moving on to two self-esteemed focus titles, first from Ita Sao, the co-owner of the iconic bookstore, A Different Book List, comes I Am Big, in which a young black hockey player finds joy in his talent and confidence in the cheers of his family, his coach, and the other players while facing down those who see him as a threat. And in Cooler Than Lemonade, Dueling lemonade stands call for some quick thinking from Eva, who starts to sell Kofi ice cream, a South African treat, to attract some new customers. It's a great story about creative thinking and being willing to experiment and fail with a rest, even a recipe for Kofi. Rounding out the category are a few picture book biographies, including basketball dreams by and about the life of NBA all-star Chris Paul. Make Way, which parallels the lives of Robert McCluskey, creator of Make Way for Ducklings, and sculptor Nancy Schoen, whose famous brown ducks grace Boston Public Garden. Illustrator Claire Keene's art is inspired by McCluskey's style. And A Justice for All brings a second title on our list written by Tammy Charles about Justice Katanji Brown Jackson, who dreamed of becoming a lawyer as a child and eventually became the first Black woman to sit on the U.S. Supreme Court. And on this next slide, we see Brian Collier's name again, this time accompanying Sandra Wallace's biography of Diane Nash, Love is Loud. At the side of Martin Luther King and John Lewis in the struggle for civil rights was Diane Nash, 
a leader of the student wing of the civil rights movement who participated in both the Freedom Rides and the Selma Voting Rights Campaign. And that leads us to The Girl Who Heard the Music, the true story of award-winning pianist and environmental activist Mahani Teve and the beloved island she is helping to save, Rapa Nui, also known as Easter Island. After finding her celebrity, she returned to Rapa Nui and built a music school constructed with recycled trash, powered by solar panels, and complete with a food garden. Next, we're going to look at some easy readers and early chapter books, which I'll briefly highlight. Some of these are only available in paperback, but we're working on an exciting partnership to make them available as hardcovers, so stay tuned. I also want to note that we have been urging publishers to make more of these titles specifically available in Spanish language editions. Meanwhile, from Ready to Read, there's a new Judge Kim in the Kids Court and a new Ready to Read graphic title, Chicken Karaoke, dealing with stage fright, and two new World of Reading readers featuring Star Wars Return of the Jedi characters and Minnie Mouse. New into the step in the Step Into Reading series are Cooking with the Birthday Bird, an early biography of Wilma Pearl Mankiller, a new Grumpy Monkey, and a new Uni the Unicorn. Easy reader style. On to early chapter books now. The newest Acorn series is Adventure Friends, featuring Miguel and Clark, two friends eager to use their walkie-talkies, compass, and map to find a hidden treasure. And then the newest from Cherry Blossom Press is the In Bloom series from Cecilia Minden, which are A-level decodable chapter books for those graduating from her Easy Reader series. The cover is coming soon. Then, well-known picture book author Jarvis debuts with a chapter book, Bear and Bird, The Picnics, The Picnic and Other Stories, Friendship Stories about BFFs, Bear and Bird. And finally, there's a Stitchhead, or there is, there's Stitchhead. He's the first creature made by mad Professor Erasmus, but he's been long forgotten as the professor went on to make more monsters that are way more grotesque. So, Stitchhead has been caring for these creatures, but now he has a chance to leave and become famous. What will he decide? This cute new series is perfect for fans of Amelia Fang and Hotel Transylvania. And now, as we move on to Spanish, here's Erica. Hello again, everyone. Um, I'm gonna dive right in with Spanish first up. From Picarona is publishing, Picarona is publishing the Oscar, the Hungry Unicorn titles in Spanish, and you'll get to meet the rainbow puking baby cornillo in the Spanish edition before the English language version even arrives. It's a funny take on how to care for a baby, but will help new big brothers and sisters prepare for their own baby cornillo's arrival. Then in our roof is blue, Sarah Eschenich a native of Puerto Rico, tells a heartfelt story of resilience as two siblings work to recover and rebuild after Hurricane Irma destroys their home. This is both the author and the illustrator's first picture book being published simultaneously in English and Spanish. Now for some easy readers, the Goonies are back. Mikey, Chunk, Mouth, Data, and their friends first stole everyone's hearts in 1985, and now they appear in this illustrated storybook, complete with booby traps, near-death experiences, pirates, treasure, sloth, and a heartwarming ending. This is certain to be more amazing than the time Michael Jackson came to Chunk's house to use the bathroom. <laughs> then, Raul III, his latest graphic novel style, El Toro and Friends title, uh, the reader, is Tacos Today, following the young luchadores on the hunt for their favorite lunch in another action-packed story from the world of Vamos. Though the story flows in English, it has Spanish phrases throughout, thus earning the category of duolingual. And Puta Bopre winner Juana Medina is also back with Elena Rides, a, re a relatable tale of the ups and downs of learning something new as Elena the Elephant learns to ride a bike with her loyal sidekick, the Little Red Bird, as her faithful cheerleader. 
so cute. Next, we wanted to highlight uh, Roaring, Book, Roaring Brook Press's Hispanic Star series, publishing simultaneously in English and Spanish. The two newest biographies are pop singer, songwriter, and actress, Selena Gomez, and American gay liberation and transgender rights activist, Silvia Rivera. And then these last two titles are from the publisher Puck. And we start with middle grade novel, Academia Prodigios, a fantasy from New York Times bestselling author, DNL Clayton, that takes us to a school of magic in the clouds with a new arrival, Aya, the first of her kind to attend. She makes friends and enemies and her mentor disappears. It's a nail biter to the end. <laughs> And finally, in Lake Lore, a young adult novel by award-winning author Anne-Marie McLemore, two non-binary teens are pulled into a magical world under a lake like a parallel universe. Years later, as the two worlds start to collide, with the underworld drifting above the surface, the teens, who are no longer friends, need to work together to keep their secrets from what the world uncovered. This reminds me so much of a show I've been watching on, I think, Netflix called La Brea. I think it's really cool. And that's that's our wrap on Spanish. I'm going to turn it back over to Susie, who's going to pull us into middle grade. Hi there, I'm back. Now for middle grade. There's a lot to cover here, so we'll briefly mention some of the many continuing series and popular authors to give more time for the new things, with two exceptions here at the top of the list. I'm very excited that Brian Selznick is back, and with a nature story titled Big Tree, the fate of all life on Earth may depend on the bravery of two little sycamore trees or seeds in the epic adventure illustrated with nearly 300 pages of breathtaking pictures. It arrives in early April, so be on the lookout. The other big mention is You Are Here, a powerful and engaging exploration of contemporary Asian American identity in the form of interwoven stories set in a teeming Chicago airport, written by authors Linda Sue Park, Grace Lynn, Tracy Chi, Ellen O, oh, and many more. There are 12 in all. It's edited by the We Need Diverse Books co-founder, O oh, herself. This is also the first book in Linda Sue Park's new imprint at HarperCollins, Alita, which will focus on stories and voices that come from outside the dominant culture, which she reminds us is essential for giving young readers a richer, richer understanding of our shared and complex world. I'm excited to see what comes next. Now for some continuing series. Jasmine Taguchi, Peacemaker, deals with jealousy as she travels to Hiroshima to visit her family. A new Percy Jackson title, The Sun and the Star, brings secondary demigod characters, Nico and Will, into the limelight. And Loki, A Bad God's Guide to Taking the Blame, is the second volume in the myth-based Bad God's Guide series, this one involving Thor's birthday. Next, we have some social emotional learning themed titles from three established authors, including The Many Masks of Andy Joe, Jack Ching's deeply personal story that explores themes of family, friendship, identity, bullying, creativity, and the love between immigrant grandparents, parents, and their American raised kids. In Hands, Tori Maldonado delivers a fast paced read that, park, that packs a punch about a boy figuring out how to best use his hands to build or to knock down. And then from the beloved author of Front Desk is, Kate, is Kelly Yang's new novel, Finally Seen, a gripping novel about a young girl who leaves China to live with her parents and sister after five years apart learning about family, friendship, and yes, the power of being finally seen. There's also a debut here from Ambreen Butt Hussein, the unlovable Alina Butt. Alina Butt has changed schools four times since her family's big move from Pakistan to and being the new kid doesn't get any easier, but she's determined to make the most of her new school year. This story is based loosely on the author's own childhood and it's funny, 
heartwarming and charming. We have some important books about death and dying forthcoming, starting with When Impossible Happens. Jane D'Souza's timely story of a nine-year-old girl whose grandmother dies during the pandemic lockdown in India. Readers will fall in love with Swara and her equally creative grandmother and relate to, and of course be saddened by, her loss. Then in World Made of Glass, award-winning author Amy Polonsky sets her novel in the late 80s at the height of the AIDS crisis, told from the point of view of a girl who is working her way through the grief of losing her father to the disease. Now, take a deep breath, and finally, Simon Sort of Says, from Aaron Bone, takes the horrific trauma of a mass shooting and puts a both, if you can believe it, hilarious, and you can believe this, wrenching bent on the process of finding new friends after such a terrible experience. Two standalone realistic titles are up next. Elliot Jelly Legs and the Bobblehead Miracle is an illustrated novel from up and coming author Yolanda Ridge in which 11 year old Elliot relies on his magical bobblehead doll to help him excel on his hockey team. It's the Mighty Ducks meets Aladdin in a story about believing in yourself, friendship and teamwork. And then in the lost year, Catherine Marsh introduces Matthew, a 13-year-old Ukrainian boy who uncovers a harrowing family secret dating back to the Holdemore of terrible famine devastated, that devastated Soviet Ukraine in the 1930s. It's already being compared to Ruta Sepecha's Between Shades of Grey and Alan Gratz's Refugee. I want to highlight a few LGBTQ plus standouts coming this year. Ellie Engel Saves Herself is from Stonewall honoree Leah Johnson, a laugh until you cry, cry until you laugh story about friendship, change, and the power we have to love ourselves. There's a supernatural element to the story too, where Ellie gains the power to bring the dead back to life after an earthquake hits her town. And then regarding the beautiful something else, Tara Beth at Scholastic simply sent a note, all in caps, saying, this is an amazing book. And there were four exclamation points. Full of humor and heartbreak, this story about a non-binary character navigating a binary world is perfect for fans of Alex Gino and Kyle Lukoff. This is the author's third book set in, South, in Southern Appalachia. And finally, it's a force like a hurricane that Jonathan Bacut describes in his novel in verse that carries a unique and visual typographical treatment highlighting the terror and triumph of coming out to one's family and friends. Check out the sample page here. Now for some fantasy. First up, National Book Award finalist Brandon Hobson brings us the storyteller, a kaleidoscopic adventure that mixes the anxieties, friendships, and wonders of a Cherokee boy's life with Cherokee history and lore. This is the author's first middle grade title, and it also delves into the protagonist, Ziggy's mother's mysterious disappearance. Once There Was is a thrilling high-profile debut about an Iranian-American girl who, after her father is murdered, discovers that he was secretly a veterinarian to magical creatures out of the bedtime tales he told her as a child, and that she must take up his mantle despite the many dangers. This story is filled with adventure and a whole flurry of wonderful creatures. Then, in a breath of, mis of mischief, Marcy Kate Connolly is back with a fantasy that will make every child want to escape into its magical world. Come along as Ira, raised by the wind and born in a castle, discovers the strength of her courage and the power of friendship. Once you're done there, Momo Arashma Steals the Sword is the first in a thrilling and funny new fantasy series about a girl who sets out to save her shin to goddess, to save her Shinto goddess mother and the world by facing down demons intent on bringing chaos. Kids will be eager for more. 
Several more series fantasy offerings are on the way, including a new entree from the amazing Angie Thomas, Nick Blake and the Remarkables. In her middle grade debut, Thomas launches an inventive, hilarious, and suspenseful new contemporary fantasy trilogy inspired by African-American history and folklore. There's a new series from two-time Newberry honoree, Christina Suntovat, as well, The Guardian Test. It's the first in the Legends of Lotus Island series for readers who love stories about animals, magic, and kids who embrace their powers to change the world. There's a ton of magic coming from these two alone, but don't forget these continuing series, the second in the Witchlings series, the third in the Wilderlore series, and the finale in Daniel Krause's Teddy Saga, They Set the Fire. Once we're through with all that amazing fantasy, there's a plethora, a plethora of new middle grade mysteries headed our way too. First up is The Big Sting, a lighthearted novel that takes us to Leo's grandfather's farm, where it turns out that his grandmother's beehives are stolen. While anything but a risk taker, Leo summons the courage to help find the bees and stand up to his grandfather while learning facts about beehives along the way. To Catch a Thief stars Amelia McCuffin, certainly no detective, and her small beach town is certainly not the place to solve a crime. Mm, until it is. The town's Dragonfly Day Festival is about to be ruined, and it's up to Amelia to save the day. Then, in another small town near a river, Ruth Mornay uncovers a well-kept town secret while investigating the suspicious death of her beloved 64-year-old neighbor, swept away is a modern Nancy Drewisk mystery that will keep readers captivated. In Turtles of the Midnight Moon, Spanish words are interspersed in this new mystery from a Honduran author set in Latin America, part unlikely friendship story and part eco-mystery. It's a fresh take on the evergreen theme of kids standing up for our animal friends, this time with two girls apart, countries apart, finding a common bond in saving sea turtles. There's a new mystery series from IQ author Roland Smith up next, The Wilds. In book one, the Amazon ring in Asia Wilds life is anything but ordinary. Instead of attending middle school, they accompany their parents, scientists who work to save endangered species on adventures around the world. A research trip to the Amazon turns into a dangerous mystery when their mother goes missing. Do they have what it takes to rescue their mom? You'll have to read it and find out. Then three continuing series to mention. There's a new James Ponty City Spies title, a new Stuart Gibbs Fun Jungle title, and in Orca's High Low Current series, Below the Surface has readers searching for buried treasure and solving a mystery. Now for two exciting dystopian titles. We start with Christina Collins, The Town with No Mirrors, a unique exploration of body image set in a modern day utopian community where mirrors, photos, and even words like beautiful and ugly are forbidden. Zaley, a girl with a guilty curiosity about the outside world, one day finds herself beyond the gates of her town where she has a chance to search for her mother, see herself, and learn about the closed off world she's been living in. Perfect for fans of Counting by Sevens and Extraordinary Birds. And then, in Elf Dog and Owlhead, M.T. Anderson drops us into a world where a global plague has brought life to a standstill, and a boy and his magical dog explore the woods behind the house, full of ancient secrets among its twists and turns. There are evocative black and white illustrations by Junie Wu throughout. And rounding out middle grade, we have three first in series mysteries. First up is from powerhouse author Neil Schusterman and Eric Elman, book one in the Noah Prime series, I Am the Walrus. This kickoff introduces us to Noah, a boy who has the ability to mimic animal traits, but he doesn't know why or how it happened or why there are suddenly people out to kill him. Now for some time travel. From Dustin Brady comes World's Worst Time Machine, in which a couple of kids setting out to create their own fun purchase a time machine for $3 at a garage sale 
and chaos ensues. Brady's laugh out loud sense of humor and daring adventure will keep even the most reluctant reader wanting to turn the page. And then in the rhythm of time, well-known authors, Questlove and S.A. Crosby, S.A. Cosby, introduce best friends, Rahim and Kasia, who need to work together when a special cell phone battery transports Rahim back to 1997. Ooh, so long ago. Okay. And now, over to Gwen for young adult titles. Thank you, Susie. In young adult fiction, we'll start with some horror, fantasy, thriller, and mystery trends. Uh, first up are some LGBTQ plus titles, including a debut from Sarah Underwood, Lies We Sing to the Sea, which is promoted as Madeline Miller's Circe for YA readers. It's inspired by Greek mythology, exploring the fate of Penelope's hanged maids, perfect for fans of Renee Adia, Alexandra Bracken, and Margaret Rogerson. Then, and Bianca Torre is afraid of everything, an anxious, introverted, non-binary teen birder somehow finds themselves solving a murder mystery with their neighbor, a fellow anime lover, all while falling for a cute girl from their birding group and trying not to get murdered. It's a sardonic and campy YA thriller. Two horror titles coming this spring from Sourcebooks are This Delicious Death and We Don't Swim Here. The first, from the best-selling author of My Dearest Darkest, is the story of four ex-zombie best friends who just want to enjoy their lives as human girls until a concert gone wrong reawakens their hunger for flesh. The second title weaves an engrossing narrative that is told by two cousins, bringing out heart-stopping tension on every page in a Southern Gothic setting and diving into American racism. Next up, are some must-have fantasy titles that need little introduction. First is Margaret Rogerson's novella sequel, Mysteries of Thorn Manor, which takes place one month after the events of the New York Times bestseller, A Sorcery of Thorns. Then there's the final book in Cassandra Clare's Last Hour series, Chain of Thorns. And finally, Holly Black returns to the world of the folk of the air with the stolen air. This title opens a new series set in the original world of Elfheim. Let's end the fantasy section with Nightbirds, Kate Armstrong's dazzling new fantasy world full of whispered secrets and political intrigue where all women's magic is outlawed, but four girls with unusual powers have the chance to change it all. The Nightbirds, who can gift with just a kiss, must make a choice to remain kept birds or to take control remaking the city that dared to clip their wings. There is some exciting stuff happening in this now starred review title. Now for some mysteries. Tell Me What Really Happened asks readers to figure out who is telling the truth as four characters share their stories through police interviews that keep the reader guessing until the very end. Chelsea Sedati's previous YA books have garnered great reviews, and this new mystery is sure to rocket her onto bestseller territory. In Liar's Beach, readers will dive into an Agatha Christie-inspired mystery set in Martha's Vineyard, told in the point of view of a prep school boy, Lyndon, who joins his roommate Jasper and several of their friends for the last few weeks of summer. When Jasper's enemy, Greg, is found lying face down and unconscious in a swimming pool, the only question is, who did it? Staying in the water, Linda Urban's Lying in the Deep is a juicy mystery of jealousy, love, and betrayal set on a semester at sea inspired cruise ship with a diverse cast of delightfully suspicious characters who will leave you guessing with every jaw-dropping twist. Now, don't get out of the water yet because you haven't heard about The Stranded. Sarah Daniels' riveting dystopian thriller features a diverse cast of teens who have to rebel against the government for their freedom aboard the Arcadia, a once luxurious cruise ship that now serves as a post-apocalyptic refugee camp. This is a real nail-biting suspense novel that I can't wait to finish later today. And the first in a duology by this debut author.
Next, we have three Native American tales of the supernatural. The first is Cynthia Lytic Smith's Harvest House, a follow-up to the acclaimed Hearts Unbroken, which delves into the critical issue of missing and murdered Indigenous girls and women. And at the same time, delivers a spooky Halloween tale about a haunted house, a haunted crossroads, and solving an unsettling mystery. Then, in Billy Buckhorn and the Book of Spells, Cherokee Choctaw author Gary Robinson offers the first in a new series with a thrilling story of supernatural power and ancient beings threatening the Cherokee Nation. This title features Native healing and Cherokee mythology and language intertwined with new technology and modern reservation life. Robinson has authored several Billy Buckhorn high-low series titles from Orca, so it's exciting to see Billy starring in a full-length novel for the first time. Funeral Songs for Dying Girls is the newest from dynamite Indigenous author Cherie Dimaline and set in a cemetery where our protagonist, Winifred, lives with her father and the obese chihuahua she pulls around the grounds in a squeaky red wagon. I'll give you a minute to envision that. It's an intriguing story exploring love, the afterlife, and Indigenous identity that you'll be sure to enjoy. Now to touch briefly on a few more thrillers coming this winter where Darkness Blooms takes place in an eerie town filled with secrets and founded on blood. The daughters of three women gone missing one stormy evening search for the truth while the town seemingly wants their blood next. So much blood. In retro, best-selling author Jared Schusterman and debut author Sophia Lapuente introduce Limbo, a giant tech conglomerate reminiscent of Facebook, which poses the question, can you survive a year without modern technology? Luna Iglesias, recently entwined in a cyberbullying incident, jumps in feet first, joining the retro challenge where contestants live without modern technology, wear vintage clothes, party as if the future weren't already written, and fall in love as if they were living in a movie. Sounds perfect, right? But then lies, secrets, and betrayals begin here too. And Luna is fighting for her survival. You can't miss this one. The psychological thriller Delicious Monsters promises to be the haunting of Hill House meets Sadie in an evocative and mind-bending mystery following two teen girls, each navigating the treacherous past of a mysterious mansion in parallel narratives set 10 years apart. Don't you just love this cover? Next up are some hard-hitting YA titles not to be missed. A propulsive social justice adventure by renowned activist and award-winning documentarian Ruchira Gupta, I Kick and I Fly, is an inspiring, hopeful story of a triumph about a girl in Bihar, India, who escapes being sold into the sex trade when a local hostel owner helps her to understand the value of, body, of her body through learning Kung Fu. It's based on her Emmy award-winning documentary, The Selling of Innocence. Then, in May, four months past Florence arrives. It's a novel in verse by Emily Page Wilson, honing in on her experience with Hurricane Florence in 2018, and centered on the very relatable and timely themes of climate change, natural disasters, and the preventable damages that they cause. Here's a fresh new voice you won't want to miss. And then, we have Nick Stone returning to YA with Chaos Theory, a contemporary love story entwining the lives of two teens, a certified genius living with bi a bipolar diagnosis, and a politician's son who is running from his own addiction and grief. Don't miss this gut punch of a novel about mental illness, loss, and discovering that you are worthy of love. Sorry, I just lost my place. All right, moving to more African-American coming of age stories. We have Nigeria Jones from a name that you'll recognize, Evie Zaboy. This bold story explores race and complicated family dynamics centered on a 17-year-old girl whose father is the leader of a Black liberation group. Then, in There Goes the Neighborhood, Jade Adia makes her powerful debut set in South Los Angeles that explores friendship, first love, community, and the impact of gentrification on neighborhoods of color. Now, Put on your seatbelts for Ride or Die, an exciting, fun, authentically voiced debut arriving just in time for summer. 
Complete with a unique playlist, this adrenaline-packed joyride is an ode to Gen Z and chaotic teens. There's an unconventional love triangle and chapters titled with songs, perfect for fans of Grace D. Lee, Ebony Liddell, Baby Driver, and an enthusiastic teen readership ready to devour a fast-paced novel. So depending on the birthdays of those in the audience, this might be the most controversial title in our mix today. Never Trust a Gemini is a refreshing debut from Freya Nicole Wolf that hilariously blends astrology, friendship, and unrequited crushes while focusing on the joys and awkward misunderstandings of teen romance rather than on the struggles for acceptance and love. Indifferent for boys, we delve into a timely story about queer sexuality, prejudice, and finding romance in unexpected places from the acclaimed author Patrick Ness. Ness uses black bars throughout to call out redacted language like curse words and descriptions of sexual acts, providing a commentary on censorship and banning, particularly of books about queer characters. Reminiscent of A.S. King's latest novel for sure. A new title in the Soundings High Low series from Orca, Baby Drag Queen is written by C.A. Tanaka, a multiracial trans mask author and featuring a trans teen who starts performing as a drag queen in order to make money for his family. It's a welcome addition to this cutting edge dyslexia friendly series. Johnny Garza Villa's second novel, Ander and Santi Were Here, takes place in a family taqueria featuring a young muralist about to head off to art school when romance strikes and suddenly his world is turned upside down. We're glad to see another Latinx character in the spotlight. And finally, a few more romances. First up, Alexandra Bracken begins a new duology with Silver in the Bone, with a tenacious heroine, deep roots in Arthurian legend, and a breathless chase from Savannah, Georgia to the cliffs of Cornwall, England, that is pure adrenaline. Then, Ashley Schumacher's The Renaissance of Gwen Hathaway is a contemporary body positive rom-com that takes place in a Renaissance fair filled with magic, fun characters, and of course, romance. And last, a romance too fun not to share, even though it's not on the slide, is a title from Joy Revolution, David and Selena Yoon's brand new imprint. In Queen Bee, debut author Amelie Howard explores themes of friendship, betrayal, and having agency in your life in a delightful anti-historical Regency era romp that's Bridgerton meets the Count of Monte Cristo. Join protagonist Ella as she infiltrates London's high society season, seeking revenge, but soon must choose between bringing down the queen bee or following her heart. Um, even though that one's not on the slide, you will find it in our book list. And now on to nonfiction titles with Erica. Hello again, everyone. Uh, before we jump straight into nonfiction, I wanted to highlight a new imprint that started last fall, uh, Read Woke Books from Learner Publishing. The imprint was founded in collaboration with Cicely Lewis, who started the Read Woke Challenge that you've hopefully heard of in order to equip young people with the knowledge needed to be compassionate citizens. Together, um, they've, they've built a really nice list here. You can find all of the titles from this imprint, including their Spanish language editions, in bibs by simply searching Read Woke. This month, the first six fiction titles arrive with Bo and the Buzz chapter books, pictured here, uh, offering an authentic look at the role of Black barbershops in a community, celebrating Black joy and including full-color illustrations. Also this month, the Left Out of History series publishes with six books, focused on bringing underexamined moments in ignored voices in history to life through compelling photos and primary sources with new perspectives, infographics, sidebars, and primary source quotes, critical thinking questions that will encourage engagement as well. And finally, you can find uh, resources, including videos at the link here. Now for some more series nonfiction. First up is the lower middle grade series, uh, Topics to Talk About, with titles written for younger kids to better understand and process each topic, which is broken down with photos and captions meant to guide leader, readers to look, think, ask questions, make guesses, and create as they go. 
I find this next one really exciting. From the Groundbreakers series comes a new subset focused on Black movie makers, spanning from Oscar Micheaux and Ava DuVernay to Spike Lee and Julie Dash. For over 100 years, Black filmmakers have made incredible contributions to America, uh, American cinema and culture, and the Groundbreakers portrayed in this series created thought-provoking stories about the experiences of Black people to broaden perspectives and increase awareness. I think it's so well done. And then next, I wanted to mention that, hurrah, Scholastic's If You series, uh, longtime staples of library nonfiction collections, is being reissued and updated. The new volumes have new ISBNs, new pictures, and most importantly, new text. Kirkus calls November's release of If You Traveled on the Underground Railroad a fiery and inspiring look at a pivotal period in U.S. history. The next issue is If You Sailed on the Titanic, arriving this month. <clears throat> yeah, then Unseen Jungle, next, the microbes that secretly control our world, is part of your Hidden Life series that lively peeks into the amazing world of microbes, has a kid-pleasing ick factor, and is chock full of facts, humor, and fun illustrations. We think you'll feel that ick factor too, but when you do, remember that termites are saving the planet one fart at a time. I'm not making this up. <laughs> and now for two middle grade series from Orca. Uh, the new addition to the Orca Think series is Good Food, Bad Waste, Let's Eat for the Planet, that takes a deep dive into why humans waste so much food and the consequences for people and the planet. The new Footprints title is Dig Deep, Connecting Archaeology, Oceans, and Us which looks at how we can learn from the past and help our oceans today and into the future. These titles address hard questions about social and environmental issues with expert reads, including indigenous authenticity readers. It's a great series. <clears throat> now for two standalone titles. In Willie Mae Brown's My Selma, the author combined family stories of the everyday and the extraordinary as seen through the eyes of her 12-year-old self, giving readers an unforgettable portrayal of her coming of age in a town at the crossroads of history. And moving into teen, in How to Be a Young Anti-Racist, Nick Stone joins Ibram X. Kendi to write a young reader's edition of the New York, uh, number one New York Times bestseller that sparked international dialogue. It will serve as a guide for teens seeking a way forward and acknowledging, identifying, and dismantling racism and injustice. Next, I have Luma Mufle's From Here, a memoir about her tumultuous journey to reconcile her identity as both a gay Muslim woman and a proud Arab-turned-American refugee. I've shown her, um, yeah, sorry. She started the Fugees family, founded in 2006, which is the only network of schools in the U.S. dedicated to refugee and immigrant education, and where everyone takes art and music, and everyone plays soccer. Again, that's from here. And this second cover just arrived uh, for Ariel Aberg Rieger's America Redux which uses, on the next slide we'll see it, collage style art and handwritten text to provide, and I quote, a critical, unflinching cultural history and fierce beacon of hope for a better future. The author is a visual storyteller who takes a modern look back on history from alternate perspectives, outlining the overlapping circles of cause and effect that reverberate across time. Oh my gosh. There was a highly competitive auction to, auction to win this one, and it promises great adult crossover appeal. Now I'm thrilled to present our last title from beloved and so, so talented author, Ruta Sepetis. You, the story, is a powerful how-to book for aspiring writers that encourages you to look inward and excavate your own memories in order to discover the authentic voices and compelling details that are waiting to be put on the page. Aspiring young writers are sure to find some valuable lessons, lessons within its pages. And that's a wrap on our titles. Uh, what you see here is a screenshot, 
shot <laughs> of the Broad Art Youth Services webpage, where you will find uh, a link to sign up for our book room, Bookworm Children's and Young Adult Focused Newsletter, which we just started this fall, this past fall, I should say. And the link to our resources page, chock full of downloadable story time activity kits, book discussion guides, and more to come. And a link to our Facebook page. And as soon as they are available, our summer reading resources that tie into titles and authors we are offering special bulk pricing on for your summer reading program prize needs. Uh, title list includes popular characters and series such as Bluey, Llama Llama, Pizza and Taco, The Less Kids on Earth. Authors such as uh, John Green, Victoria Jameson, Tay Keller, Celia Perez, and Nick Stone. And titles for pre-K through grade 12, including many graphic novels. We'll be sharing kid-friendly author video spotlights that you can share from your library to patrons a summer reading checklist, book trailers, activities, and book club discussion guides as spring arrives. You can pre-order now for shipping this spring. You can contact me at the email address shown here, bys at broadart.com. And I look forward to partnering with you in 2023. This is it. And would love to know if you have specific needs or suggestions to share. We're, we're looking for new things to try and open to open to your ideas so please reach out and i'll be in touch soon and farewell from my cat as well so thank you so much for joining the broad art uh tell me more youth services collection connection um this is mm -hmm. the first of many events and we're really excited that you joined us a few of you have asked if you will be seeing a list of titles and we will have that sent to you when you get the recording of this webinar